this place is a disaster. Sorry about all this. Morning. Thanks. I'll tell the guys to try to pick up after themselves. Oh, it's fine. I live for it. Sort of. Oh, I've been meaning to talk to you. Can we add maybe a broom onto the tool shirt? I'll see what I can do. Thanks. What's he doing? Oh, him? He's been reading a lot of woodworker YouTube comments. Our YouTube comments? No, all of them. Oh my. Hey buddy, what you doing? Being a real woodworker, sure as heck ain't gonna be that guy. Fair enough, so uh, what are you making? I don't even know. Uh-huh. Well, I'll leave you to it then. What you working on? What? What are you working on? What? Hold on. Favorite part. Good chat. How's editing going? Fine. What you working on? Video about clones. But we're a maker channel. Exactly. How's the new scroll saw YouTube channel going? It's fine. Close to monetization? <sighs> no. How's the new video that we posted the other day? Meddling. Should I just leave you to? That would be great. Fair enough. So guys, I was thinking it would be cool to make a video that tells people how they can make a box. Not how I would do it, but how they can do it. Like all their options, brainstorming, that kind of stuff. Guys, guys, attention, attention. You got any ideas? I got the brain trust here, you know? Awesome. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the shop. You know, there's a lot of videos out there that talk about how to make a box. And usually they show how to make a specific box that the person's making on that video. And I've got several videos like that. But I figured this one, let's talk about how you can design your own box. Some of the things you have to consider to make the box the way that you want it to be. It starts with brainstorming, which really helps out when people want to actually contribute. There are obviously thousands of ways to make a box. So we're not going to talk about all of them. But all boxes boil down to these fundamentals. You need to determine the dimensions, the shape of it, if there's any sort of functionality for it, the joinery, how you wanna do the bottom and how you're gonna do the top. Now, I know that there's a lot of stuff of, well, what if we wanna put feet on it and the style of it and, and trim and all those things are important as far as brainstorming to come up with what you ultimately wanna build. But you can't really even do those without these fundamentals. The order for coming up with those fundamentals really depends on what's driving you to make the box itself. So they can be put together in any order. I like to think about the functionality first. Is this box going to serve a particular function? As in, does it need to hold a particular item? If it does, then you have to make sure that box is plenty big for that item. And it also includes if there's going to be a lid. If you're going to have a lid, is your item going to sit up higher so the lid can close down on top of it? 
What are the dimensions of the lid? These are some of the things you gotta come up with. Most of my boxes don't perform a particular function. So I go off of aesthetics of just what looks pretty to me. So what I end up doing is I end up gravitating towards boxes that are about eight to nine inches long and then anywhere between five to six inches wide. That's just average for me. As far as the height goes, usually three to four inches. When calculating those dimensions, you also have to consider what's gonna be the thickness of your material. Now it depends on what tools you have and what your skill level is. If you don't have any sort of milling tools, then you're probably gonna be stuck with either using half inch material, three quarter inch material, whatever it is that you can buy at your local store. If you do have something like a planer, well then the sky's the limit, whatever you wanna have. I consider scaling really the most important thing when it comes to figuring out the thickness of your material. You don't really want to have this giant box with super thin sides. It, it, it doesn't look right. It's probably going to feel flimsy too. At the same time, make a smaller box that's, you know, eight inches long or something like that and use three quarter inch material and it looks too heavy. It just feels like it's a block of wood instead of being kind of an elegant box. I went back and looked at some of my old projects to see, you know, what's kind of the thickness that I use for most of them. And it typically falls between three eighths of an inch to five eighths of an inch, depending on the size. So you can say really the average is about a half inch thick. I mentioned shape whenever I listed those fundamental tenets of your box. And most of the time that shape just may be square or rectangle. If you want tapers or some sort of pillowy effect or some sort of curves, those are all things you have to consider right off the bat because they're gonna affect the dimensions of your piece. So let's say you want a box, but you have a cool curve along the bottom. Again, you have to take that in consideration now because that means you're gonna make your box a little bit taller than normal so you can account for that curve. Joinery is super important for figuring out the design of your box, but it may not be important for the same reasons that a lot of people will tell you about. We're gonna get into a controversial topic right here, so some people will probably not agree with me. I will pick the joinery based off what I think looks best for the box. I don't pick the joinery because of its strength. That means that I'll make a box and I don't necessarily have to have my miters reinforced with dowels and splines and a bunch of other things because it'll fall apart. I look at it as it's a box, okay? It's not supposed to hold a tank, it's a decorative box. Now, if your box is supposed to serve a particular function like you're building a cabinet, drawer, right? Well, that's really a box, right? Well, you have to put a lot of weight in it. You're going to be open and closing it. It serves a function that is going to impact your joinery. Huh? See, functionality, joinery, two of those tenets of building your boxes. The most common joints you're going to see for making a box are going to be miter joints, box joints, dovetails, and rabbits. There are a ton of different variations on joinery out there. There's a ton of videos. I've got a bunch of videos. Actually, I have a whole playlist devoted to making different joints. So you can always find out how you wanna make that miter or how you wanna do those top dales. But let's figure out what type of joiner you wanna have for this box, because again, that affects the dimensions and potentially the functionality. And the next two things I consider are the lid and the bottom. So looking at the lid, what type of lid do you want? Do you want to have a lid that is completely removable? Do you wanna have a lid with hinges? Do you wanna have a lid that has some space underneath it? Or do you wanna have something that's flat? Considering how you're gonna do the lid is a big part of that design process because, well, it impacts how you're actually gonna make the box itself. There's absolutely no wrong choice with this. So it really comes down to what works best for you and if you wanna challenge yourself in different sorts of ways. Most of the boxes I make have a removable lid because I just dig that. I like making those and I think they look cooler for me than having them with hinges. However, I've made a lot of boxes with hinges. And I feel like sometimes it's really good for me to go back and do one like that just to kind of keep my skills in check and make sure that I don't lose my ability to, you know, be able to mortise out hinges or something. And ultimately, you're going to figure out also things like, you know, how you want to construct the handle and that sort of thing. And again, that's part of the design process. But to me, it's kind of more of a ladder phase. If I can't even figure out how I want the, the lid to be on the box itself, I'm not really going to think about a handle. And the last concept that I look at is the box bottom itself. So whenever I talk about how you wanna make your box bottom, it's how thick you want the box bottom to be. Are you going to be able to have it sit inside of a channel? Or do you wanna have rabbits 
so that it fits underneath it. And then you maybe use screws or something to hold the box bottom into the box. I grabbed a bunch of different boxes that I made so we can take a look at those, look at those dimensions, look at those shapes, look at those fundamental tenants and see how they differ from box to box. I grabbed four different boxes and funny enough, I did not pick these because they're different. These four boxes were all sitting next to each other and they are fundamentally different. So this is gonna be a really good test to look at. So let's look at each one and talk about those fundamental tenets. So look at this box. Okay, as far as the dimensions go, I can see that it is a little over five and almost nine inches. And as far as the height goes, we are looking at about three and three quarters of an inch tall. So a little bit taller than some of my other boxes in comparison. I made sure that the lid was flush, but I also wanted to have a removable lid. And then not only is the lid removable, but then since these walls are flush, I had to make sure that I put something on the inside to keep the lid from just sliding right off, right? So that means you had to put a liner in there. And then the box bottom itself is captured inside it and it's just a panel that's in a channel. For the joinery, I used regular miter joints and then I put in some aluminum dowels here in the corners. Now the only reason why I did those is because I made a cool aluminum dowel lid here. Otherwise, I might not even have done that. I might have just left miters because I think miters are plenty strong for something like a decorative box. With this box being about five by nine, let's look at the material thickness itself. Well, when I look at it, it is about three eighths of an inch thick. And then I added another quarter inch thick liner on the inside. So I did do a little bit thinner wall than maybe I would have done for a different type of box. But I also took into account that I would put a liner in there. So now we kind of have thicker walls. If I would have made the walls super thick, then it would have just looked a little bit too chunky for me. Let's compare this to another one. So we'll grab this one over here. Okay, as far as the size goes, it's a lot narrower. We're looking at about four and a half by nine, and then the height is three inches. Okay, so we know that as far as the dimensions go, this is gonna be a smaller box. So let's look at the inside. I went with half inch thick material. And now looking at this, in hindsight, I think the walls are a tad too thick. I think I should have made them just a little bit thinner, more like this other box over here. But you know, that's part of the design process. I thought it would be okay, but in hindsight, eh, probably a little bit too thick. This box served no functionality, so that helped out. I didn't have to build it to a specification. Now I did wanna have the lid not be removable. I wanted to have it on hinges, but I also wanted to have it smooth with the, in, the outside faces. So put my hinges on there, I did a little bit of a liner, which I didn't necessarily have to do. With this one, you have to have a liner because the lid doesn't want to just slide off, right? Well, if you're doing hinges, I don't necessarily have to have a liner. It's not going to fall off because that is hinges. But, you know, I decided to put one in there just for decorative purposes. Again, I went with miter joints for the sides, but this time I reinforced them with splines. Didn't have to do that at all, but I wanted to coordinate with the the lid that I made here. So I just used a complimentary uh, color. And then the bottom, again, complimentary color, just a panel that I encapsulated inside of a channel. Let's compare this to this other box here that is about the same size. As far as the dimensions go, you're looking at about five inches wide, about nine and a half long, and uh, a little over two and a half inches tall. So a little bit shorter. Now, when we talked about those fundamental tenants to building a box, functionality was not a key player to this because it was just gonna be a decorative box. However, one of the big things I wanna do with this one is I wanted to have the lid slide. So that's what drove this, is having the lid on the box in a particular way. So let's go off that one and then work from there. If I'm gonna have the lid slide out like this, I have to make sure that my thickness of my walls accounts for that. Because if I use super thin walls, then I won't be able to cut a channel on the inside faces of that for this lid to slide. So if I look at it, I went with half inch thick material. So while this box is about the same size as this one, and this one has half inch thick material, it looks a little bit chunky to me. However, it's because it's just one solid wall, it doesn't really serve a purpose. This one, the walls are the same thickness, but it has a purpose. It had to be that thick 
to allow the lid to slide the way it does. As far as the joinery goes, instead of doing miters, I did box joints. So just a really simple box joint. I like wide box joints. If you make them super thin, sometimes they're called finger joints, it's really the same thing. You can just decide on what you want to do, how you want to do them. The bottom, again, a panel that is encapsulated in it. However, knowing how you're going to do the joinery depends on how you're going to do that box bottom. Because I did a joint that is like this, not a miter joint, I couldn't just route a channel to allow my box bottom to fit into place. If I would have routed the channel all the way through, then you would have seen little notches on the ends whenever I cut those. And that's not what you want to have. So because of those, I had to take it over to the router table and do a plunge cut. So plunge it down, route out the bottom, lift it up so that I don't have any entrance and exit points to hold our box bottom. So I had to make it a little bit different. However, I still use a solid panel inside of a channel. For this one, and this one, and this one, what was the shape? Well, it's all considered a square rectangle-ish shape. Let's look at this guy over here. Much different shape, right? Well, I mean, technically you could say that it is a rectangle. However, we do have some profiles here. We have a graceful curve around the sides. So let's look at the dimensions of this box. Well, counting the lid, you're looking at a little over six inches and almost nine inches. So a little bit different. The height, you are about four inches tall, not counting the handle. I wanted to have the lid be completely removable, so I took that in consideration. Now, while this lid was removable, you notice I did not do an interior liner. This one has a removable lid. I did do a liner. Again, you can pick what method best works best for you. In this case, I wanted to have curve, but I have the bottom here we have to take in consideration. So that means I had to make my sides a little bit bigger, a little bit you know taller than normal so that I could cut that curve so the box bottom will fit where it needs to fit into, but that adjusts the dimensions of it. Again, you have to figure out how you want to do those types of things. As far as the joiner goes, in this case, I did a basic rabbit joint. So really simple joinery, nothing crazy here. And I then, added the feet here, which you don't really have to do, but by doing that, it does strengthen this out a bit because the foot overlaps the, the rabbits on all the corners. So it makes it a little bit stronger. I do have videos on how to make each one of these. So I'll put links down in the description below. That way you can watch this video as kind of a part one and then move on to that, pick out the box that you want to watch and see, well, then how do you turn around and turn that design into something? So that's kind of your part two. I know we went over uh, a lot of talking about how to do things like this, but it's really important. I don't want to skip over those fundamentals. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did consider subscribing to the channel, maybe check out this other video over here that has a lot more action to it. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.